Pollution Pollutants are all the dead things around us that should not get into your body because they interfere with its work. As long as they don't penetrate your tissues, they won't interfere, like plastic eyeglasses and clothing. But, if they are invasive, your body must fight to remove them. Pollutants can invade your body via the air you breathe, the foods and beverages you eat, and the products you put on your skin. The biggest tragedy is not recognizing when a pollutant is harming you. Two people can use the same face cream. One develops a rash, the other does not. The one who did not assumes the cream is not harmful to them, that they are like a bank vault, impregnable to that product. A better assumption is that the face cream is somewhat toxic, as evidenced by the rash that can develop, and they escaped the rash only because they had a stronger immune system. The immune system is like money paid out of the bank vault for every toxic invasion. When the money is gone, the bank, your health, fails. Solvent Pollution Solvents are compounds that dissolve things. Water is a useful, life-giving solvent. Most other solvents dissolve fats and are life-threatening because fats form the membrane wall around each of our cells, especially our nerve cells. The solvent that does the most harm is benzene. It goes to the thymus, ruins our immune system, and causes AIDS. The next worst solvent is propyl alcohol. It goes to the liver and causes cancer in some distant organ. Other major culprits of disease are xylene, toluene, wood alcohol, methylene chloride, and trichloroethane, TCE. Metal Pollution Biochemists know that a mineral in raw element form always inhibits the enzyme using that mineral. Copper from the meat and vegetables you eat is essential. Inorganic copper, like you would get from a copper-bottomed kettle or copper plumbing, is carcinogenic. Unfortunately, the inorganic form of metals is what pervades our environment. We put metal jewelry on our skin, eat bread baked in metal pans, and drink water from metal plumbing. Another obvious metallic threat is tooth fillings. Mercury amalgam fillings, despite the assurances of the American Dental Association, are not safe. And sometimes the mercury is polluted with thallium, even more toxic than mercury. Gold and silver seem to have fewer harmful effects, but no one should have any pure metal in or on their body. Other prevalent toxic metals include lead and cadmium from soldered and galvanized plumbing, nickel and chromium from dental wear and cosmetics, and aluminum from food and drink cans and cooking pots. Mycotoxins Molds produce some of the most toxic substances known called mycotoxins. One small moldy fruit or vegetable can pollute a huge batch of juice, jam, or other product. Although molds are alive and can be killed by zapping, mycotoxins are not and must be detoxified by your liver. But, because mycotoxins are so extremely poisonous, a tiny amount can incapacitate a part of the liver for days. Aflatoxin is the most common mycotoxin I detect. It is produced by molds that grow on quite a variety of plants. For that reason, I am always cautioning people to eat 
only perfect citrus fruit and never drink commercial fruit juice. Of the thousands of oranges that go into the batch of orange juice you drink, one is sure to be moldy, and that is all it takes to give your liver a setback. A heavy dose of vitamin C helps the liver recover quickly. It also helps get rid of aflatoxin before it is consumed, right in the food container. So keep a plastic shaker of vitamin C powder handy and use it like salt on all your food. Physical Toxins Breathing in dust is quite bad for you, so your body rejects it by sneezing, coughing, spitting up and out. Imagine breathing in broken glass particles. They cut into the lungs in a thousand places and couldn't be coughed up. They would travel. Imagine swallowing a needle or open pin. If the tip was blunt, it could move through the intestine. But because it is sharp, it gets caught in your tissue, then works its way deeper and deeper. Would we ever knowingly breathe in broken glass? We are justifiably afraid of it in our food or under our bare feet. We are unaware that it fills our homes when fiberglass insulation is left imperfectly sealed off. Any hole made through the ceiling or wall, even if covered with cloth, lets swarms of broken glass bits into the house air. Air currents flow inward into your living space, so all holes leading to the attic or insulated spaces must be sealed airtight. Of course, fiberglass should never be used in home construction, draperies, or around water heaters. The best advice is to have it all removed while you are away, and then vacuum and dust. Occasional exposures by house builders working outdoors does much less harm. Chronic exposure from a single small hole in the ceiling does a lot of harm, leading to cyst formation. And that cyst is a perfect place for parasites and bacteria to settle and multiply. When the intestinal fluke settles there, it becomes malignant. Cancer patients with solid tumors have either fiberglass or asbestos in them. Asbestos is another tiny bit, sharp as glass, that moves through your body like a swordfish, impaling your cells until it too gets routed into a cyst. We have been led to believe that we no longer have asbestos in our homes because we have outlawed the fireproofing materials it was used in. While that may be true, the source I find most often is all too prevalent, the clothes dryer belt. As it gets hot, the belt releases a blast of asbestos particles that are forced through the seams of your dryer and also openings in your exhaust hose by the high pressure formed inside. It is now in your air. Chemical Toxins Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, or Freon, is the refrigerant in your air conditioner and refrigerator coils. CFCs are suspected of causing the ozone hole above the South Pole. All cancer sufferers test positive for CFCs in their cancerous organ. I have preliminary evidence that it is CFCs that attract other pollutants, fiberglass, metals, PCBs, to form a growing tumor instead of allowing their excretion. This would make it a super carcinogen. How could you detect CFCs leaking in your home? By the time your air conditioner or refrigerator needs recharging, you have been exposed for a long time. We desperately need an inexpensive in-home test for this unsuspected killer. Arsenic is used in pesticide. Why would we poison ourselves along with the cockroaches? Is it because we can't see it happening? Just as we couldn't see the fiberglass floating in the air? 
Our diligent scientists have studied the mechanism of arsenic poisoning in great detail. Then, why are we allowed to put it on our lawns, to be carried into our carpets via shoes? Polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, oily compounds with wonderfully useful electrical properties, were originally used in transformers until their inability to break down into less toxic substances in our environment was spotlighted. Banned from use, I find them in most commercial soap and detergents. Is transformer oil being disposed of by selling it to soap makers? Formaldehyde is used to cure foam. As a result, foam furniture, pillows, and mattresses give off formaldehyde for about two years after manufacturing. If you sleep with your nose buried in a new foam pillow all night, you are risking major lung problems. Every cleanser in your house probably has a toxic warning on its label. Every fluid your automobile uses is toxic. Every pesticide, herbicide, and fertilizer you put on your lawn is probably toxic. Every paint, varnish, wax, lubricant, bleach, and detergent will send you to the hospital if even a small amount is ingested. Why do we keep them around? If you are ill even after zapping, it is toxins still at work. Getting rid of them is a major step toward being well. This is from pages 36 to 41 from the book The Cure for All Diseases by Hulda Clark. For more information about parasites and pollution, visit huldaclark.com.